and welcome to the episode 289 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today we have, among other things, the renewal of a contract, the Beatles performing at La Scala, and a 24-hour studio session. Let's start the episode on the 16th of October 1960. It was on this date that German promoter Bruno Koschmeider renewed once again the contract that his agency, Betriebe, had with the Beatles, extending it until the 31st of December. This extension is particularly important because Beatles historian Mark Lewison maintains that Koschmeider told the band that he was considering bringing the five Brits to Berlin on the 7th of January 1961 for an entire month of work over there. At night, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed their duties at the Kaiser Keller for their first residence in Hamburg, West Germany. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles had become a quartet with Paul McCartney on bass and Pete Best still on drums. On this date, they performed a two-hour lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. In 1962, the Beatles performed live at La Scala, but this was not the famous theatre in Milan, it was only a barroom in Roncorn, England. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Just like I can't resist to tell you now about www.simonmas.com support where you will find all the information on the things you can do to help this community of music lovers grow, and the information on the NFTs with the deluxe version of What A Fab Day, with hours of extra content. Give it a look at the end of the episode, the link is in the description. Let's move to the 16th of October 1963. The Beatles were at the Playhouse Theatre in London to record their fourth and last appearance on BBC Radio's Easy Beat. Their manager, Brian Epstein, had communicated to the BBC that, for safety reasons, he would not allow the band to appear in radio or TV shows with live audiences anymore. This meant the cancellation of a fifth Easy Beat appearance as well as a BBC television appearance for Kindly Leave the Stage. Anyhow, after an afternoon rehearsal starting at 4.00 pm, the Beatles taped I Saw Her Standing There, Love Me Do, Please Please Me, From Me To You and She Loves You between 9.00 and 10.00 pm. While waiting for the taping of the show, the band was also interviewed by BBC reporter Peter Woods about the news of their engagement for the Royal Variety Show on the 4th of November. The Beatles replied to the condescending tone of their interviewer in a similar fashion. Easy Beat was aired on the 20th of October between 10.31 and 11.30 pm, while the Woods interview was aired today between 7 and 7.31 pm during Radio News Reel. In 1964, between 2.30 and 5.30 pm, producer George Martin and his team worked at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road to complete two mono mixes of No Reply. In the evening, instead, the Beatles' British tour reached Hull, with another two shows performed at a local ABC cinema. Another session one year later, in 1965, this time with the Beatles in attendance. The task of the day was the recording of their next single, the last in 1965, Day Tripper. Later described as a routine composition, the band nevertheless recorded its rhythm track with consummate professionalism, live in studio, between 2.30 and 7.00 pm. What was technically a second recording session started at 7 and went on until midnight. John and Paul used the time to record their vocal performances for the song, aided by George for the verses. In addition, George and John recorded more guitar parts and Ringo overdubbed the tambourine, completing the work on the song. 
Before the conclusion of the session, the basic track for George's If I Needed Someone was recorded in just one take, with bass, drums and John's guitar. Vocals and other overdubs were to be recorded in a couple of days, see episode 291 for that. In 1967, tirelessly, the laborious work on the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film continued at Norman's Film Productions. Let's close the episode with the events in 1968. At 5 pm, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Martin, engineer Ken Scott and tape operator John Smith reconvened at the EMI Studios for what turned out to be the longest session for a Beatles release. They worked for 24 straight hours, using all the three studios, plus room 41 and 42 in the complex, to complete the work on the White Album. After mixing in mono and stereo both Why Don't We Do It In The Road and It's All Too Much, intended for the upcoming Yellow Submarine soundtrack album, the work concentrated on the decisions about the running order of the album, the choice of material, and the crossfades needed to produce a result similar to that achieved on Surgeon Peppers, with songs within each side connected to each other. The discussions on which material to include and how this material was to be arranged on the record was intense. George Martin was in favour of producing an extremely strong album, discarding various weaker songs, but John and Paul wouldn't have it. In the end, Not Guilty was dropped, allegedly because of George's not-too-strong vocal performance on the track. What's the new Mary Jane suffered a similar fate, probably because it was too freeform, or because everyone but John wasn't convinced of its potential. The compromise on the final track list managed to satisfy everyone. Each side was opened by a strong song. Each had a song by George. The three songs with animals in their title were grouped on side B. The heavier tracks were put on side C. No composer had more than two songs in succession, and each side lasted between 20 and 25 minutes. We'll see how this insane session ended tomorrow, with the new episode of What A Fab Day. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.